Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gamers all around the world, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. It has been a long while since we have done an episode. Uh, a lot of things have changed, some things have stayed the same. It is myself, the Shant, and Dan, the man. Dan, how are we doing? Great, doing good, doing stellar. We are here one year later uh, to take a look at uh, where we are with WWE 2K. Uh, we're going to touch base on 22, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming 2K23. Yeah, it's amazing how time just quickly sprints by it's like you get a game and then a year passes by now you're getting another game but it's a 2k contractual thing that they have to honor um it's almost as if they benefit from maybe doing it every two years but you know well we saw how that worked out a year and a half ago um but nonetheless we are here and as you said we want to sort of quickly talk about 2k22 because i know that for those of you who have been listeners from the beginning, we pretty much previewed 2K22, I think, maybe up until release. Like, we talked about everything that there yeah, was to talk about. almost ad nauseum. Yeah. Like we... <laughs> A lot of times it was just overlapping the same information. But 2K22, as you said, next month will be a year since it came out. Um... What do you think? Overall impression, now that we're one year after all the patches have been done, all the DLC has come out, the game is pretty much, it is what it is at this point yeah. until we move on to 2K23 and they shut down the servers for 2K22 somewhere down the line. What did you think after, because I'll leave it at this. I said that the next 2K game, right before 2K22, I said the next 2K game will be make or break for 2K. Yeah. So where are you on 2K22? I I think 2K22 was a solid recovery from 2K20, given the disaster that it, that it ultimately was. And again, there were certain aspects of 2K20 that were fine. Not a lot, but a couple. And for me personally, we've talked about this before, um, the glitches at times, were almost part of the entertainment. <laughs> because I mentioned before that one of my creator wrestlers, I put this weird little, like, cod piece thing on him, and when he would run around, it left, like, it left a trail, trail behind him. Just like, like a, levitating. Yeah, like a ghost. And it was the weirdest thing, and I loved it. <laughs> but I can also see how other things, like, I, I think people were getting caught in the ring and stuff like that on the regular their legs were, like, sinking into the mat, and all you could see was the upper body. Exactly, and then it makes the game unplayable. That's not fun. That's a yeah. terrible user experience. And there are, in, in app development, in video game development, there's teams who are responsible for these things. Checking it. And apparently, 2K20, they dropped the ball, or didn't have the team, or didn't want to pay them to do <laughs> enough work. But I, I, I played a fair amount and we'll get into this a little bit more in depth, but I played a fair amount of 22 and didn't run into any discernible issues, Yeah. at least from like a technical standpoint. So they they cleaned it up and they fixed the, the major issues from 20 very well. So I think it was a good recovery. Yeah. But we also talked about how, great, all you had to really do was deliver a functional game with something cool, Last year. But going forward then, you have to try and be innovative. You can't crutch on what you did. And I played a, a lot. And I still uh, dab... I haven't in the last month or so. But I still dabble with the GM mode because it's it's fun. There's a reason that we wanted it back for years and years and years and years. And it's because it's, it's a unique gameplay experience. Yeah. I played a fair amount of My Rise, which in its execution is tedious, especially because it's not like a forward-moving story. A lot of it's very lateral. Doing this, doing this, doing this, and never really accomplishing anything, as opposed to the old My Careers, where it was a conducive story that you followed. Yeah. 
I don't remember, which tells you the impact it had on me, whether or not I really touched the Rey Mysterio showcase mode. Um, I dabbled a little bit in, in my faction, but it's essentially a microtransaction gold mine, which I'm unwilling to dig in. Yes. And I feel like I'm missing something, which probably also doesn't speak well to whatever mode it is. Universe, um, which I don't think I've ever touched. Yeah. And then the normal gameplay. The normal gameplay is fine. Yes. And the my GM mode is pretty good. So in uh, and I'll, I'll I'm just gonna throw this out there and then I'll throw it over to you. So the the two K twenty three version of my GM mode, I'm a little excited about because it's adding more features, but we'll still have to see. So you take it away. What's your thoughts on twenty two? So 22, I actually initially, I didn't buy voluntarily. I got it as a gift, a late Christmas gift. <laughs> and so, sure, I'll take it and I'll dabble into it. Can't, um, can't be mad about free stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I very much was on that boat where I was just waiting to see the reviews and see what people wrote and if this game, if it was 2K20 Part 2 or if it was actually something of its own. And I will say that the... Outside of exhibition mode, all the other modes, they're pretty standard, kind of like how you, you said it. Uh, the My Rise recycled yeah. career mode that we keep on getting, and this time around, it just felt like we're going to put all these little storylines into your overall storyline, and yeah. then if you complete those, we'll give you unlockable arena number three so yeah. that you can use. Great. Um, the create a superstar mode copy paste more or less um there there were still things that i was running into like you would try to put a bandana on someone and it would like not go it would go on the hair not through the hair yeah so it would just kind of be like put on like a crown um some restrictions here and there where like you would put two things and oh you want to put this jacket on well you have to take the wrist tape off yeah, like why? Why does this thing? Damn. Have any, why? Why does part A have anything to do with part B? Um, the uh the GM mode. I'm not gonna lie. I just never got into it. I don't think I ever clicked on it. Yeah. Um, it was. Well, I'm not. I can't say that it was good or bad or indifferent. Judging by your comments, it seems like it was very solid and did what it needed to do for the most part. Um, universe mode, I haven't dabbled into that since like WWE 13. I've never really cared for it. Um, the Ray Mysterio showcase mode. I played through it in maybe four sittings, but like I skimmed through all the cutscenes, yeah. all of Ray Mysterio narrating what was going through his mind. My intention was just to unlock all the unlockables. Yeah. Um, like but, for me, the, the, the Daniel Bryan one from a few years ago kind of killed it for me because the, uh, there was the, the match, I forget what the actual match type was, maybe a uh, TLC or an Extreme Rules match against Randy Orton in one of the stages. I remember, yeah. And I kept losing because I, it wouldn't let me send Randy through the, the announce table or something. And so the the specific goals you have to do throughout those matches, which I know is to hit key moments from the thing, was frustrating as hell for me. So yeah. that's another reason why I don't really put too much stock in Showcase. Yeah. But I will say the core gameplay, like just exhibition mode, as you said, it was fine. Yeah. I think that it, you know, it's playable. It, it functions. Do you run into the odd glitch here and there? Absolutely. But that's with any video game. Um, the core gameplay is fine. There are a few moments where some things seem very difficult to do. Yeah. Uh, the control scheme, I've since become used to it, but the fact that you have to press two buttons for a finisher. If mm. you want to do a springboard, you have to hold the left thumbstick and you have to press these two buttons at the same time to get your, your superstar to do that move. Yeah, it, it gives it a, a very, and not in a good way, fight game feel. Yeah. As if you're playing Injustice. Injustice? Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> the DC game. Injustice yeah. or uh, Mortal Kombat where you're like, all right, so uh, I got to slide the down arrow into the right arrow, hit circle, and that's how I do a uh, quick punch. Why? Why is it so goddamn complicated? <laughs> yeah, so like that, that part 
you know, put aside. Um, exhibition mode was fine. I, that's where I found myself most of the time was yeah. just like having tag team matches, battle royals. I thought that was fine. Again, when you are far a decade far removed from one of the greatest, the, the greatest 2K game that ever came out, 2K14, and you see how well everything you know was included in that game back then compared to say a 2K22 you always feel like okay well i wish they would do this i wish they would take this back to how it used to be but overall the core gameplay i thought was fine i was a little concerned about the control scheme but it seemed like they had something where the foundation for the most part was something that you if you're not used to you can quickly learn and get into. Yeah, which was part of the whole thing, right? Because they, they scrapped the the build and came in fresh to this one with a new build. Yeah. And so we kind of talked about it during the, the Road 222, where, great, now you, you, you find something that works as your foundation, and then you build upon that going forward. And that's where we are now, is seeing whether or not we've successfully built a house or if we have a rickety shed. Yeah. Yeah, and I will say that uh, the biggest plus, I think, for for 2K22 was the cross-platform community creations because people were just cranking out all these... There were so many. There was so much, And, like, some, some that maybe hit, you know, didn't hit the mark... But for the most part, you would find these created wrestlers that people have made, which looked a lot better than superstars who were scanned for the game. Yeah, my so. one, my one annoyance with the creative, the create a super wrestler, um, which is on one hand fair, but on the other hand still annoys me, is the fact that if um, they m- made a character using downloadable content components, unless you owned the DLC, you could not you have could not. that character. Because I, I I just I don't remember oh I think I was trying to download the the maximum male models people, and L A Knight existed, but I wanted Max Dupree, and I tried to download a Max Dupree and it said no you don't have these parts you can't have it I was like well to hell with you guys then, <laughs> um because I didn't buy any of the D L C packs yeah. at all so, is what it is yeah and I mean there were I mean. Not to like uh, prolong this, but there were a few things that I thought were a big step down. Like advanced entrances was completely omitted. Yeah. I noticed that a lot of times, like if you would win the match as a custom superstar, the announcer goes, here is your winner and would completely skip your name. Didn't it also a lot of times play just a generic entrance theme? My brain seems to remember that happening too. Probably. I think there were a handful of times where you'd win a match and just some some music would play. Yes, yeah, I I, I I think that was a two K twenty thing yeah. that happened. I can't say that it ever happened on two K twenty two, um, but like there was even another small thing where it, let's say if you're in a tag team, you're you're playing a tag team match, and let's say your partner gets eliminated and you win the match for the team. In the victory scene, your eliminated character is not celebrating with you. They're in a fighting stance, rocking back and forth, <laughs> and you're just celebrating like you won that match, you know, without a without a teammate. <laughs> and so like there's this big disconnect of yeah. you celebrating and your your tag team partner who got eliminated is just standing there in a fighting position, rocking back and forth. And it's it's those small things where it, like it takes you out of the game. Yeah, like, especially I, when you're looking for a simulation style game. You want you want that so cons- that continuation. Like you yeah. want to feel like everything is one. Yeah. Um, so there were stuff like that that just you know really was a big inconvenience. But like I said, we're far ro- removed from the days of a two K fourteen or a WWE thirteen where that type of stuff was was on point. But with all that said, like I said, time flies by and here we are. 2K23 is, I think, like... Yeah, about three weeks. So, Yeah, so it's slated for uh, release on March 17th, which is roughly about three weeks away. And the biggest selling point is that they have war games now. The showcase is based on John Cena's career. But 
before we start talking about all the features, I would say let's just take it one by one. So the biggest thing in this year that they're introducing is the War Games match. And yeah. I know you and I talked about this a little before when we were on the air. I never really clamored for this match type. Yeah. I always thought in the back of my mind that if they get around to it, that would be great, but I wasn't exactly holding my breath every year going, when is that War Games match coming to two? Yeah, you weren't, you weren't pulling for it as like a marquee feature. Yeah, but War Games is officially going to be a part of 2K23. And I know you and I talked about a few previews that we saw on different YouTube channels. And I'm going to be very honest here. We talked about this, that it's one of those things where this concept looks very good on paper, However, when you look at the sort of partial, the semi-execution of it in these videos, it doesn't really come off as like, oh, what a great match type to play. Because you and I, we talked about this, about how you could be on one corner on, in one ring, all of a sudden your tag team partner who's taken a beating is in the middle of getting pinned. And by the, if you're not in the middle of an animation, you got to like run through two pairs of ropes Go to the other side of the ring and try to break up that pin. Yeah, because the the reason that the War Games match works in real life is, sorry to spoil this for people, the matches in some capacity are choreographed. Yeah. So you have people in the right place at the right time to break up these pinfalls in a two-ring situation. Yeah. But when everything's kind of up to random-generated computers... I don't anticipate that being the most fun user experience. Yeah. Because for that exact reason, you may... I mean, how many times just in the normal games have you accidentally started leaving the ring as the computer starts to pin your opponent, and by the time you're able to get back in, it's already over? Over, yeah. There, It's already problematic. Putting it into a weird uh, multi-ring capacity where you do have to go through multiple sets of ropes just to get there... I think people are excited about the concept, but once they start to play with it, I think this is going to be kind of like other game modes we've had where you play it for two, three weeks, and you go, you know what, I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> now, we, I, I personally talked about how one of my favorite little mini features in these matches is how you can have an elimination option. Yeah. Which I feel like if you put that in there, if your teammate gets pinned, okay, now it's down to you and the remaining members that are a part of your team. Yeah. And you can have great combos there, two on four, one on four, two on three. Um, but the fact that you even brought it up earlier, that if, let's say, you're the last person out and you join this match and everybody's already basically beat up, especially if weapons have been brought into the match... You could maybe play for like two minutes and all of a sudden someone on the other side of the ring gets pinned because they've taken enough damage. That's it. Yeah. You really don't get a chance to participate. So. And our, I don't even know how, I don't even, are weapons even integratable? Yeah. You basically have to get the weapon before you enter the ring. So like you have an oh, option. some sort of weird thing. Yeah. But like once you're in, you're in. Yeah. You can't go back out. So, which is fine. Like, that's kind of like, I assume if you're a game programmer, like, you have to find a way around stuff like that. Because yeah. I imagine if they left weapons out, people would be like, well, why couldn't we have weapons in the, in, in the actual match? Yeah. So, that's my opinion on war games. I mean, it's there, great, but I just feel like it's not going to play as well as some people think. Yeah. But we'll see. There's, like you said, three weeks till then. Uh and right now all we've got is I don't I, I think there's still work in progress builds that these people are playing it off of. So Yeah, it's there's like a little disclaimer on the bottom. It yeah, says so, not final build. So we'll see. We'll see wh where we go from there. Um touching real quick, just cause we, we kinda glossed over it already, is there is a decent sized roster in this game, however, there are also some people that either are so kind of not at the forefront of the mind uh, that it's almost surprising that they're in there, or people who are also, once again, outdated, such as Dewdrop and Nikki A.S.H., who are in here under old now, now old names. And it would be nice if the 
developers were able to go in and patch those names into the new ones uh, either at release or shortly after release. But I don't expect that they will. <laughs> well, especially when you consider the fact that what was so unique about 2K22 and not so unique because I feel like it's one of those things where they saw people who like were very good with like coding and like had a background in like finding a way through things is how there would be people who would take like the Nikki Cross model from my factions or the Alexa Bliss model from my factions. They would upload it to the community creations. People would download it. And then 2K does this thing where they're like, okay, everybody's doing it. Let's throw everybody a bone. Yeah. And then they start patching those models in so that you wouldn't have to go and download it from someone who's broken into the codes and has put it onto the community creations. Yeah. <laughs> but to go back to your point, if Nikki Cross was a model that you patched in, why are you just not putting that model in for 2K23 instead of a gimmick that is now no longer in existence? Yeah. Dan? Why don't you just update your roster? But um, we briefly talked about this. The roster... No, nobody really like surprising stood out to where yeah. I can say, oh my goodness, this person's in the game. Um, Except for Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Bunny obviously is the uh, pre-order, pre-order bonus superstar. And I, no offense to Mr. Bunny, I don't care. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> one of those that you can do without. Um, but to go back to what you were saying before, who's to say that maybe if somebody uses apart from Bad Bunny's uh, DLC character and, like, makes a community creation, if you try to download it, it might be like, oh, you have to get the Bad Bunny DLC yeah. to, 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 to download this. So hopefully it won't be that way. I don't imagine Bad Bunny having a lot of bits and pieces to his attire for people to use. But, um, yeah, the roster, it's very NXT heavy as well. And, like, not in a good way where, like, back in the day when, like, you had the Garganos, the Champas, who were, like, making a name and they would be put into the game. Yeah. It's more like, no offense, the lower tier people who I think a lot of people don't even really know by name or by face. And they're just shoved in there because it's been a messy year for WWE. People getting released. People getting released and coming back with Triple H taking over. So it's like this weird spot of, like, you know, who made the cut, yeah. you know? Now, I, I do appreciate how... Full-ish. I didn't read all the names, but how full-ish, even just adding in some of these NXT names, makes the women's roster. Because it's always felt misbalanced. Yeah. Where you have 60 men and 20 women. And so having people like Alba Fire, Cora Jade, Toxic Attraction, Sans, Mandy Rose put in the game, um, it adds some depth so that you don't necessarily just always have to do Trish versus Lita yeah. or Becky versus um, Nikki Cross. So, Well, to sort of counter that point as well, which I know we briefly talked about, there are even some legends like Lita last year was wrestling a month and a half before 2K22 came out. She didn't even make the roster. Yeah, The Bella Twins, who are in the Hall of Fame, and they didn't even make it to the roster. And now all of a sudden this year... Oh, new addition to the roster, the Bella Twins. Yeah. And 2K, it's one of those things where we kind of talked about this off-air. There are certain people that will be in the game, then they get taken out. Then they get put back in as DLC, then they get taken out. Yeah. And it's like, just leave them in the game. Yeah, once you've made them a model, unless, like, unless obviously there's a contractual thing that stops you from putting them in the game, I get it. But stop squishing everything into a jumbled mess yeah anyway just wanted to touch base on that but speaking of prominent characters this year's showcase focuses very heavily on as they call him mr hustle loyalty and respect john cena john cena do 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 anyway we can't see him so i already sort of expressed my opinions on showcase I don't really. No offense to John, don't really care. I'm. Uh, you, well, even I don't if even, I buy the game, I'm probably not going to play. Much here's of that. the thing: I don't even think that we're focusing on who it's on. I just think that we're focusing on the mode itself. Yeah. Because 
Like, they've done this with Steve Austin. They've done this with Daniel Bryan. They've done this with Rey Mysterio last year. And I appreciate the fact that this year you're playing as his opponent, yeah. which on its own is a saving grace because playing as Rey Mysterio 80 times last year, yeah. the fact that you couldn't even lift up some of your opponents and that limits your moveset wasn't the funnest thing to do. Yeah. But, so, so it does give you some variation on, on the norm. But. Yeah. But my incentive at this point, if I do get 23 down the line, um, I'm just going to play this mode just to unlock all the arenas and all the rotten. And, and then be the, done with it. And then be done with it. Because there's no... The, the thing that I feel about Showcase, which is part of why I liked the My Careers, and especially when they had the multifaceted ones where you could do a couple of stories... Um, or Road to WrestleMania when they did that and that was whichever fun. game that yeah. was. Where you had five different stories to follow. The SmackDown vs. Raw series. Yeah. yeah. Is that you... There's not a ton of replay value. You play through. One and un- done. You unlock the stuff and you don't need to ever go back and look at this mode again. Which means it, it's a consumable. You go... It's like, it's like having a, a string cheese. You open the, the the little string cheese, you peel each tendril away, you eat the string cheese. Now all you have is an empty wrapper sitting in your $80 video game. <laughs> Not a fan of that. I'm a, I'm a big proponent for replay. Replay value, value. yeah. That's why I like the old I like the Kingdom Hearts. I'm a I'm a RPG person. And I I'm a sucker for a good story. So like The Last of Us, Uncharted, Kingdom Hearts, Mega Man X on Super NES way back in the day even has a shit ton of replay value for me because A, it's short, but it's fun. Yeah. As opposed to just play this match, play this match, play this match, here's the stuff, bye. (laughs) Well, also to kind of make a note on that, I can't even consider this a mode considering that I can go on the, I was going to say the WWE Network, I can go on Peacock and just watch these matches I don't need to see a pixelated version of what I can see on Peacock, you know, like on my video game exactly. console. It's just, it's, it's never like, it's never, and this is what I was kind of talking about before. Take away showcase and give us a mode that was the second most requested mode for 2K22, create a story. Cause that's a mode where if you, the beautiful part about that mode was that you could make it as serious or as funny yeah as you wanted to make and it that gives it replay value because you can play with it. It, it it like i know that they refer to universe mode with sandbox mode yeah but being able to do anything you want i think you were even able to write your own dialogue right yeah you could so you could have them say whatever you want they do whatever they want uh follow whichever story threads you want that's part of why i like gm mode GM mode, you can always do something different. Yeah. And that's what makes it fun. As opposed to something that you hit a brick wall. And some something that I heard about, um, I, I can't I'm not gonna quote it properly, but the it was somebody talking about the psychology of like mobile games and things. And that if you're playing a game and the uh end the end goal, the 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 pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is just getting to play more or sorry uh is it basically was talking about slot machine games right there's no end game it just goes forever and ever and ever and so it's literally a carrot being dangled yeah as opposed to having something to work toward but like showcase you work toward unlockables. Here's the thing. Have fun. But there's nothing, like, truly meaningful in it, as yeah. opposed to, like, GM mode, where you're playing to be the best GM. So there, I, I, I think that these one-and-done modes don't offer the player enough incentive yeah. to care. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i agree a hundred percent uh showcase i feel like we've kind of all been over for a while not just you and i but like most part of the community like oh 
Yeah, like I I feel like two K will be like showcase this back, and everybody's like showcase this back. Great. <laughs> so I mean, we can quickly touch on this uh, universe mode. I haven't touched universe mode ever. Um, I know people say that it's kind of like a toned down, create a story mode to an extent with like cutscenes in between each it, match. It's, yeah, it, I I find it to be overtly complicated. And that's why I don't play it either. Because I, I, I don't remember which game I actually like dabbled with it in. But I did it once. And I was just like, why is this so... Because there's a difference between my GM mode. Where you're just like, oh, this is fun, design it, but here's the match. As opposed to Universe, which I kind of got the impression was like being an actual booker. Where yeah. you have responsibilities. <laughs> and that's not what I'm playing the game for. I don't want to be the guy who is is in charge of every single thing that possibly goes into this show. And that's the, the this one felt more tedious in that regard, which is why I didn't like it. Yeah. So there's universe mode and then see like if you like you can kind of see how we're like quickly going to the next thing because none of these really offer any value. My faction mode last year, they made it seem like it's this... I remember they marketed it as, like, uh, you get to create a team that has to battle the NWO for some for supremacy. And I took it as, like, oh, it's a career mode, but with a team. So, yeah. like, you get to control your team and, like, depending on what decisions you make, you know, how strong is your team? Are there any cracks or anything? And then once the game got released, you see these cards and you see everything and... It's like, okay, this is just microtransactions being thrown at me for no particular reason. Yeah, this is the mobile game portion of a console game. Yeah. Which I, I'm not keen on. I, I, I don't... I, like, I've already bought your game, right? It's not like I bought... It's not like I downloaded a free game on my phone, and now the, the business portion of it is making me buy other things. This is exclusively either participate in events or pay us money. Yeah. And the only thing, like, I, I started playing this a little bit, and I got bored of it real fast because I, it's not the type of game that I want to play on my console, especially when I'm associating it with the simulation-style games. I'm here to play the matches, and it, they're few and far between in that mode. So, well, especially like one of the things too that I feel like they were, I think in their minds they thought that they were throwing us a bone was it was like, oh yeah, complete whatever, and then you get like a vintage version of Seth Rollins, yeah, which apparently you couldn't like export to the main roster. It was just in the my faction mode. Well, it was just like my career or my rise, where you make the superstar in there and they you play through as them, and even once you get to the end, sorry, they're trapped. Yeah. Which is frustrating, especially like, uh, what was it? On 20, I think. At least I think I did it. I don't remember if you did it too. But we went straight into my career mode and made the the me person. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, this is great. And we play through, you play through the story and you're like, cool, then I'll be able to use him afterwards. And then it goes, no. And you go, so I have to make him again? Yeah. Yeah, and, like, that's the thing is that if they can offer that incentive, like, oh, retro models of your favorite superstars, okay, I guess that's a little bit of an incentive. But then again, I don't need five versions of Seth Rollins on my roster. Yeah. So, yeah, my faction, again, at this point, with all due respect, I would say just scrap it. We come down to the My Rise mode. I talked about this. We've talked about this for years at this point, ever since the beginning of BA Select Start. My Rise has just become a recycled career mode where you start off as a rookie and then you have to prove yourself to the coaches and eventually get to the main roster. But again, it's not like a cohesive story, at least like last year's wasn't. I don't know if the featuring distinct storylines, the lock and the legacy. I don't know if they've integrated anything in there that's going to make this feel more fluid, but for me, playing through my eyes last year, it was just very much do this. It was it was a grocery list yeah. of things to do, and it was just your eyes up the roster of Raw, and then 
trade yourself to a different show and do it again. And I, I never, I don't get the impression there's actually an end game. Yeah. I think you just do it until you've completed all the stuff. And then is there even a cut scene at the end? that's like, Oh yeah, you won the world title at WrestleMania or something, but I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, I played it on 2k22. I played my rise for maybe two hours and I just found that like, yeah, you get that incentive where you want to complete each and everything because then, like I said, you get like unlockable arena number three or whatever. But it just seems like the reward is not worth the time or the energy. Yeah. So uh, that, even even going back to 20, even though stuff was super glitchy, I enjoyed the my career in that when you were playing as Red and Trey. Trey yeah. Because as goofy of a story as it ends up being where like Samoa Joe has a friggin' robot arm it's fun and it's engaging and it's it tells you a story which is what wrestling is all about yeah it is a storytelling medium and if we're not getting any storytelling <laughs> and i've talked about it for a few years at this point i think that what would really help freshen up this is that if you just you know took it from you're a rookie and you have to work your way up how about if you have it where you're already at that top spot and you have to fight to keep your spot? Yeah. You know, it would just be a, a sort of a different thing, a different element, a different mode. You know, they say my rise and it's like, again, I don't think anybody is like, I don't think anybody would go into say a 2K24 going, well, I can't wait to play the my rise mode. Nobody, like, again, to me, honestly, at this point, I would get rid of my rise. I would get rid of universe and showcase I would get rid of three modes and I would just put in create a story. Because, like, I, I'm, I'm dead honest because at this point, these are three modes that I think a lot of people just don't care about at this point. Yeah. So. Um, and then we'll move on to this last one. But basically off of what you're saying is we, we talked about how essentially going from 20 to taking a break to 22, 22 was sort of the reintroduction and then this game is is kind of the okay did you guys learn your damn lesson game what we end up getting is transferring of modes instead of anything innovative because i think war games is probably the closest thing that you well can that's say. what they're considering innovative but again we're talking about it and we're going eh, we're thinking about it from a game player a player standpoint as opposed to a flashy feature standpoint and we're going i don't know if that's going to land the way you guys are hoping yeah but you have the consistent thing of showcase of universe of my my faction now after two years um and my rise and like yeah my gm was a it was a clamored after feature and they've updated it a little bit which is great that's fine. i'm hoping that the changes they made don't derail it like this like the later versions of gm mode back in the day did yeah um but the fact that we're just like okay cool let's just take the same game and we'll release the same game we'll update the roster we'll make a couple of small tweaks do something considerable with your innovation or you're going to find yourself dead in the water yeah, I think it's, um, you know, like, it's one of those things where I would be a fan of if they say, you know what, like, we had to take a big risk, we had to get rid of a few um, modes, but what we've done is given you the best exhibition mode any wrestling game can have. Yeah. I would almost, I would agree, like, I, I would sign my name on the dotted line for that. Like, if you can give me the best exhibition mode, the best core gameplay, yeah. and limit me on the little other modes that you have, yeah, the, I'm the okay fluff. with it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm okay with it. And especially, I like, I don't know that 2K is necessarily thinking about it this way. And I know even WWE was resistant to looking at outside companies as competition. But you've got Fight Forever from AEW coming out someday. I don't know what the, if, if there's any release date on that yet. But you have other games now Mini starting games, to spring yeah, up. Yeah. And if those end up having better gameplay than you, now people are going to go, <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, because I think you and I talked about it, um, end of the, the NWO revenge versus no mercy. Didn't you tell me you preferred the NWO one? 
No, no, I said no mercy. So okay. I, I think if, if this is the conversation that we talked about, I'm not sure, but um, there was a video on YouTube that WWE put out that's a part of like a, a show that they're doing where a few superstars were given the ultimate question. Were you a NWO revenge guy or were you a no mercy guy? <laughs> um, and I want to say like a few people said revenge, but like it leaned toward no mercy. Well, yeah, and I, I preferred No Mercy, but they were basically the same game. They were, yeah, <laughs> but... The, I don't think NWO Revenge, I don't think it actually had a, a career mode thing, right? No, they... they Not had, in the same capacity. They, they didn't have a career mode, but they had, like, a, you, like, select a superstar, you fight, like, nine or ten matches, and then you uh, battle for the world championship, yeah. and that's it. Which, on its own, is, is fine, yeah. especially because the gameplay is so good, I don't mind. Where Re- Revenge kind of gets hindered is that it doesn't really have a create-a-wrestler suite. It's just mm-hmm. you, you, you get the superstars and, oh, I can give Hulk Hogan's costume to Sting. Yeah, great. Wonderful. I had so many creative superstars in uh, No Mercy, no Mercy. It was ridiculous. <laughs> But that's where, like, no mercy on its own, like, guilty as charged, I spend most time in the exhibition mode. Yeah. Here and there, I'll dabble into, like, the survival mode or the championship mode to either get money or to, like, unlock something. But um, even the create a superstar mode, it's it's not a lot compared to today's standards, but it's enough for you to, like, have fun with. And so I don't know if this is the conversation that you were alluding to. I don't remember. (laughs) But anyway, so the whole point being, if, if you have other games creeping up on you, you can't be complacent. If you have other wrestling companies creeping up on you, you have to do something, or you're you're letting them do sh- you're letting them shoot fish in a barrel. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm starting to be nervous. This is going to end up being if we get to twenty four, and it's just hey, here for all the same stuff. We didn't really do anything. We added in a new color of steel cage. Um, but anyway, bringing it home to this last feature, we got the, the, the triumphant sequel to last year's My GM Mode. And I'll read the little caption here. It says, With My GM Mode, take the reins of a weekly show, compete against rival general managers for brand supremacy, now featuring more GMs to choose from, additional show options, multiple seasons, expanded match cards, and more match types for up to four players. Now, last year, you had the choice between, I think it was a total of five GMs, and it was, unless I'm wrong, but I think you had the choice between Pierce, Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon, William Regal, and Custom Superstar. Yeah. Um, and there were a handful, handful of shows. I think it was mostly Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, and there might have been another one, and I can't remember. But you also had, like they're saying, limitations in your stuff. So, like, your card was typically four matches. You only had the choice between singles matches or tag matches. And you could add, like, stipulations of table match, Hell in a Cell, Extreme Rules. But how the rivalry system worked, how the match system worked, how the match, uh, the, the wrestling type compatibilities worked was still pretty rudimentary. And then you get to the multiple seasons, you could play through, and you can play through as many times as you want, but it's a new season every single time. Yeah. So there's no, um, it's kind of like a dynasty league in like fantasy football, where you can take something and carry it into the next season, yeah. as opposed to this, where it was, great, this season's done, let's do it from, be- from the Start beginning. Start over, yeah. Um, so ha- having the ability, like on one of the SmackDown games, I think I went like a decade down the line. Where it's, uh, like it might even still technically be further than we are in real in real life, wow. um, but I just kept going. Uh, and granted, it would, it would it would duplicate the stories, but either way. So being able to do multiple seasons is neat. Expanded match cards, like we were talking, if you've got a women's title, men's title, and tag team titles, and you want to feature those every week, that's three of your like four matches. Yeah. Having more matches on the card, hopefully they also give you a little bit more money during the draft because you only got, I think, $2 million last year, and you'd burn through that real fast. Um, and then having more match types, like I said, singles matches, tag team matches, now hopefully we can do triple threats and fatal four ways, 
which allows you to get more people on the card so you don't have as many people getting, uh, for lack of a better term, bitchy yeah. on your roster and trying to hold you up for $100,000 uh, every couple weeks, which if you follow Battle of the Brands over on Up, Up, Down, Down, down you know is a chronic problem for those two. But I'm hoping that this one is... Because I liked, I liked the general build of last year's. I hope that they took that and actually built on it and didn't like revamp it wholly like they did back during SmackDown because I liked 06. I think you said you liked 07. No, 06 was was the one I liked. 07 with the new controllers, it just it, it didn't really click for me. So Yeah. And well there was a GM mode where they like added in a bunch of weird stuff and changed the whole layout and that became I think it was like became 08, 08, 09 where they yeah. where they did that. I think it was 8. Yeah. And when they did 8 I think that one actually gets a lot of praise from people, and I think it's because it added in a bunch of stuff, but I thought it made it overly complicated. <laughs> but hopefully this one is, is an improvement on last year's, but the fact that this is like the only bright spot that we're re- that I'm really taking out of what is on this page is a little concerning. Yeah. But I guess we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, initially, like, conclusively, it's one of those things where I told you right before we recorded, I don't really see myself buying 2K23 at full price. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow, the next day, around the holidays, if it goes on sale for, like, $20, $30, maybe. And it's bound to happen. There's going to be some something, like, a there might even be, like, a Black Friday in July sale where yeah. they knock it down 20 bucks, but... But yeah, for the most part, like even when they were first coming out with like, oh, we have war games and we have all these new superstars. I just, I I texted my friend. I was like, I think I'm going to skip for now. And even he was amazed. He's like, really? Even with the introduction of war games and all that? I'm like, yeah, I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, war games is a neat concept, like you said, to watch. But I'm not holding my breath on the gameplay version of it. Yeah. And I would say one of the other areas that they can really concentrate on and, like, focus on making it better and bigger and just more refined is the creation suite. Um, I noticed in 2K22 how limited you are, even with, like, the letters. If you, like, type something out, before you would be able to, like, slant it and, like, put it backwards and, like, you know, make it diagonal. This time it was much more straightforward. Like, you write something... Most you can do is like give it a shadow or like put like a border around it. Yeah. And that's it. And it's like, I feel like as time goes on, they will give you the war games match, but they will strip away 15, 20 other things that made those previous games a lot more funner to play. So, um, yeah, uh, my final thoughts is um, 2K22 was fine. I think I bring up the infamous analogy of if you submerge your entire body underwater but keep your nose and your mouth above surface level, that's kind of what 2K22 was. Yeah, it's surviving even though you're this close to drowning. <laughs> exactly. And 2K23, I, I think it's probably the same thing. I can't really sit here and say, oh, no, yes, like they've really – you know, got themselves out of, you know, that, that, that deep water that they were, you know, being submerged under. I, I'm not seeing it. So for what it is, for 2K22, what would you rank it on a scale from 1 to 10? Like, what would you, what, what sort of grade would you have given them it, with, with hindsight and a year of, of time to look back at it? I'll give you mine afterwards. <laughs> a solid... Seven. I I would I would also give last year's a seven. Now, as far as anticipation, like your your anticipation, I know we just said we're we're probably gonna hold off. But if you had to give a number score to your anticipation for the end result of this game, what would you give this one? Maybe a six. See, I'm probably closer to like a five. Yeah, just because the only thing that ca- that's catching me is is the my GM mode, but and that's fair. That's fair. It's just like this, a little bit of the incentive is like some of the additions on on the roster. Yeah, like some people that we didn't have last year. Yeah. Okay, we'll get this year. Um, but by the same token, there is still a decent amount of like Bray Wyatt. Yeah, who I who like I saw a video where he's gonna be a part of DLC. Yeah. 
And so it's like, oh, wonderful. Now I have to pay X amount of money just to play as Bray Wyatt. Yeah, to play as a, as a core core character. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's it's those things. It's like, I've always had this problem where, like, 2K22 will maybe give you something, but then 2K23... 2K giveth and 2K taketh away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, no, a sol- like 2K22, a solid 7, I was going to say 7.5, but I'll keep it at a 7. Um, core gameplay was fine, it wasn't the best, so a lot of things have to be refined. Um, 2K23 very much right now seems like copy-paste, yeah. with just a few extra trinkets yeah. like on the side. And ho- hopefully actual reviews will come, and I know some of the sites get paid to boost but hopefully some reviews will come out that look at it genuinely critically and will point out the good things and the bad things and will fingers crossed that we'll be pleasantly surprised by the feedback however we we are uh, ca- extremely cautiously optimistic <laughs> yeah. yeah so there you go guys we just reviewed um WWE 2K22 a year later we just previewed WWE 2K23 at this point, I'm not even too sure when the next episode will be or what we'll be covering or when we'll be covering it. But nonetheless, uh, stay subscribed to the channel and um, always remember and never forget to turn down the treble and crank up the bass. We'll catch you guys next time.